In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a crew and then we're going to use a single CLI command to create it in just seconds. This video is kicking off a whole series where we go from creating a crew with a single command using local LLMs, creating our own custom tools, integrating brand new features from Crew AI, scheduling our crew to be automated every day, and then integrating agent ops so we can see what's happening in the background and how much everything costs. So I created a new folder called Crew AI Series, which we'll be using throughout this whole series. So this is gonna be a day one project. So you're gonna type in Crew AI Create, and we wanna create a crew. Then I'm just gonna type in day one. Just day one for the day one project, okay? This is gonna take a little bit, depending on your machine, but it's gonna go ahead and go through the whole folder structure and create everything we need, and I'll be back when it's done. I mean, look at this, it's done. It has the readme, all the tools if we need them, the configuration, the main file, and the crew. So if you open up the source file over here, you have the configuration for the agents and the tasks. You have a custom tool. If you need to create it, we don't need to for this day. We will in the future. Uh, but then we have the crew. Let me lower this. Then we have the crew here. We have the task and I'm about to go over all of this. And actually right before we get into it, make sure you have everything updated, okay? So here in your terminal, go ahead and type in pip install uh, dash capital U just to kind of force the upgrade because maybe by the time you watch this video, there's some new updates. You're gonna type in crew AI and then uh, apostrophe crew AI tools. Okay, so let this run, let it update everything it needs to, and we'll be back. Okay, so in our crew Python file, this is where the whole crew is created. We can get rid of some of these comments here. They're there for you to reference on what things are. We have two agents here. We have the, rep the researcher and the reporting analyst. We can go get rid of this. And for each agent, for each of these functions, it's returning an agent. So for the configuration, it's going to get the researcher from the YAML file and all the properties underneath of it. For the reporting analyst, it's doing the same thing for the configuration. It's going to go to the config file and get anything, everything for the reporting analyst and return everything from there so it knows, so this agent knows how to perform. And then for the task, we have a research task and a reporting task. The research task is returning a class of type task. It's going to get the research task so it knows everything it needs to do for this task. Then the same thing for the reporting task. It's going to do everything, it's going to get everything from the task YAML property for the reporting task, return it here so it knows like how to perform or what to perform, like what's the expected output uh, from this task. And then this is an output file. We're gonna get to this in another video. So just go ahead and remove that. But if you wanted to, you could keep that there and whatever the second agent's output is, it'll make that markdown file for you. Now for the crew, again, there are some things to know here. The decorators, that's what these are called above the functions, they are in lowercase. Okay, but then whenever it goes to actually create or return something that's a capitalized, okay, because that's a class. So in the return crew here, it gets has self dot has self dot agents, self dot task. Um, the thing about this is that for the agents, you don't have to put in as an array like you have a lot of times before. You have to say, oh, I need the uh, the research agent and the reporting analyst as a list here. When it does the self dot agents here, it knows any agent that has a decorator it's just gonna pull that for you. You don't have to worry about that. And the same thing for the task. We want this to pro the process to be sequential. So it's gonna go in order for each agent and just execute each task. We're gonna keep that simple. Okay, now let's just go ahead and change the names real quick because I said this should be, uh, it's gonna create the jokes and then it's gonna do something else with it in the second agent. So for the researcher, how about we call this a uh, joke creator? And then if cursor is amazing. I can just hit tab and it knows to change it here as well. So for the reporting analysts, Let's say, let's call this the add emojis. And then for the task, the task, um, the, or for the agent configuration, that's gonna be called add emojis, which we'll change there. So this is the joke task, and this is the add emoji task, okay? That simple, we don't need to do anything else here. Now, if we go to the configuration uh, folder under day one, in the agent's YAML file, we need to change the researcher to be a joke creator. But for the goal of the joke creator, I wanna say, create a list of 10 jokes. Then the backstory is that you're a seasoned joke creator uncovering the latest developments in jokes. I mean, it's not, that's not a big deal, right? We can, we can modify that. Um, this one, add emojis to the jokes. And then the backstory is you're a meticulous emoji adder and whatever with the complex jokes. Okay, and again, I'm just using cursor, so that's why it's kind of 
uh, I can press tab button because it's kind of expecting me to maybe want it that way. So this, let's just keep this simple. Okay, so now we have the joke creator and the AdEmojis agents changed in the agents.yaml file. Now we need to change the task.yaml file. So I come here, this is a joke task. Um, I don't need anything for like 2024. Uh, I can get rid of this. It can just create a list with 10 bullet points of jokes. Now, the thing that's kind of interesting here is there's a couple ways uh, we can tie the task to the agent because how do we know which, if we have like 10 tasks and 10 agents, how do we know which task is to go with it's with agent? Well, there's a couple ways and one of them, and this might actually be the easier way, is under the task YAML property file, you can have this agent property for the joke task. And then this is gonna say, the joke, this task is gonna be tied to the joke creator. So now I wanna change the um, the emoji uh, the emoji task. I want this, instead of being tied to the agent analyst report, I want this to be tied to the add emojis agent. Okay, so now the tasks know which agents to go for. We have done, we're finished modifying the agents in the task YAML property files. The tools here, this is a custom tool. We don't need this, so you can actually just delete this, so you don't have to like worry about that. We are gonna to come to that another time. Um, there is a .env file here within the project. However, we're not gonna do that. Create a new file here called .env. Okay, this is where we're gonna store our open API key files and any other API keys or anything else related to local LLMs here. So you're gonna type in open AI API key, and then go ahead and grab your API key. In the next video we'll be using, I'll show you how to use local LLMs. Now, one thing we need to do, um, because we are loading it from a different directory, like an, outside this specific project, you can come up here to the crew.py, you can from .env, we're gonna use the load.env function, which is gonna grab the open AI API key variable and insert it where we need to. All right, now the last file we need to do anything with is the main Python file. Again, we can get rid of some of this. You can keep that. I mean, there's a lot of reference here, like comments that are referencing what you can help, what the community help with to understand what's going on. But we only need for this example, the run function. All these other ones, the train, the replay, replay and the test, just get rid of those. We don't need them. And in order to actually execute this, we need to execute the run function. And now in order to run the crew, we're gonna say day one crew, dot crew the function and then we're going to use the kickoff function and that's going to actually execute the agents in order that they're that they're in the crew and it's going to go ahead and execute all of the tasks that they're supposed to now you see there's an inputs here you don't need this right now we're going to use this in another video in the series i'm going to show you what that is um, that's basically you can use the inputs there and they can be directed into the agents or the task yaml properties and so you can give them more information from outside of, of the crew. So you can add things into the task and the agents of the crew, but we'll get that to another video. Uh, so basically we're done now. We've modified it the way we want so that it is gonna create jokes for us and then it's going to add emojis to each of them. However, there are two things we need to change because as of right now, it's not going to work. So up here in the day one dot crew import, this, this will be changed, but we don't need the day one, the crew the file is in the same project level. So we don't need that. And then if you go into your day one crew, so go to crew.py, the class day one crew, you don't need these parentheses either. Okay, they don't need to be there because you'll, you'll get an error. So with those updates, we are now done. So not only have we created a crew in seconds, right? We modified it to the way we want to, and now we can run it and see how it works. Now, all we have to do is you have to CD into the day one source day one directory because that is where the main Python file is. Then we can just say Python main.py. Okay, so the first agent executed the joke creator. The task was to create a list of 10 jokes. So the final answer is it gave 10 jokes and then that was done. So now the emoji adder, the task is to add emojis to those jokes. And here it did, it added emojis to each of the 10 jokes. And then that's the final output uh, from the crew kickoff. Great job. This may be your first crew that you created, but from here on out for the rest of the series, we are not gonna be manually creating all these files. We're gonna be using the CLI command. Now let you know how to use it. And I know everybody wants to know because not everybody wants to use OpenAI. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate Olama so that you can use local open source AI models. All the code and everything will be in the description below. In the meantime, here are some more videos and I will see you next video.